I'm sure most of you have had this problem before. You purchase a new service and you go to try to find the app because you want to watch it on your TV, only to find out it's not available. And that's because although smart TVs are great, a lot of them use different web-based OSs, which don't have compatibility across different apps. So I wanted to create a bit of an educational video teaching you about OTT apps, different compatible devices, and at the end, how you can actually create your own app. Before we go any further, I wanted to shout out the sponsor of this video, Eno Rain. They're a company that helps creators and businesses launch their own OTT apps so that their followers, subscribers, or whoever else can get access to their content. Or if you're a regular Joe Blow, you can also take your own video and audio content and monetize it 100% without platforms like YouTube taking a cut. Also make sure to subscribe and like this video. Let's get into it. First, I wanted to make sure everybody knows what OTT is. Now this stands for over the top, and it's essentially any content that is distributed over the internet. As most of you know, over the last 15 years, we've changed from getting content from cable or satellite to mostly over the internet. This includes major streaming services like Netflix, Disney Plus, Prime Video, but there are so many other forms than those main ones. Now, if you're taking that jump to create your own OTT app, you have to understand that app support across devices matter, and here's why. Although devices such as the Fire Stick or Android TV boxes are widely popular, you probably didn't know that 68% of households across the US that have internet only have smart TVs. Now, the main reason why this is an issue is because not every smart TV is gonna have a compatible operating system to run these various apps. And this means you are missing a lot of reach with your potential target audience. But not just that. If you're running an app on a device that has weird compatibility or it just doesn't run the app properly, this is going to greatly affect your retention and ability to keep these potential subscribers or customers or whatever you want to call them. So to put things clearly, the more devices that your app, your OTT app is supported with and compatible with, the more potential customers and the more potential revenue that you could bring in. And then when I think of the brand side of things, I want to use apps that are compatible across as many devices as possible. As a potential customer, I don't want to have to go out of my way to buy a device that is now compatible with a new app that I just had to purchase. So on my channel, I focus on talking about different streaming devices, and there's four main categories we can break down in this. First, there is web slash online access. This is if you're on your PC, like I'm recording on right now. I purchase the service and I just go to the website, log in, and now I can watch Netflix. Then there's the mobile option. We're traveling, we have phones, we have tablets, all of that. Is the app gonna be compatible with those types of operating systems? After that, we have the one we talked about earlier, smart TVs, which have some of the worst compatibility across all types of devices. Now, this is an interesting category because there are a lot of smart TVs that are integrated with Roku now, or Fire TV, or Android TV, or Google TV, which means a lot of smart TVs have moved away from those web-based or incompatible operating systems. And lastly, we have our set-top boxes, or what I call streaming devices. This includes Fire TV sticks, Roku, Android TV, Google TV, the options are endless. A little bit of geography breakdown here. In North America, mainly the US, the most popular streaming devices that I see being used include Roku and Fire TV. After that, you would probably sprinkle in some Google TV and some Android TV. Roku dominates the market because it's affordable and frankly, just widely available. It's also a very simplistic system. I usually recommend for an older audience because there's not a whole lot you can mess up on it. You click on the app, it opens up, that's it, that's all you have to do. Where Fire TV and Android based systems are usually a bit more customizable. In Europe, we see a lot of smart TV usage and for streaming devices, I know a lot of my subscribers typically stick to Fire TV, Android TV, or Google TV based systems. 
Roku's still pretty popular out there as well. So for users that don't have a smart TV, they're probably gonna go with one of those main dongle systems because they're widely advertised, such as a Roku stick or a Fire TV stick. Now that we have all that out of the way, let's talk about the middleman, which is the actual OTT app how it's created, and some of the benefits that come along with it. There's a ton of benefits to having your own OTT app created, whether you're a YouTuber like myself, a TikToker, or maybe you run a chain of hotels. You're able to manage all your content and create a seamless experience for your end user. A good OTT app can create AI subtitles. They also give you a ton of different analytics based on how many views it's getting. We already talked about compatibility across devices and how important it is, but also you want the quality of your content to be shown through the player at the highest possible resolution. So if I have a 4K piece of content, I want it to be shown at 4K. Those are all aspects that are super important to the customer and their user experience. But I know what's important to you, and that's content monetization. And there's four main ways to monetize through your OTT app. First category we're gonna look at is SVOD, and that is a subscription-based video on demand model. Think of this as your normal Netflix, Disney+, Plus, Hulu, Prime Video subscription. No ads, no extra fees, once a month. Next, you have transactional video on demand. This is when you rent or buy a single movie you can watch it for a period of time or forever if you purchase it, and it's available online through the platform you purchased it. Think like iTunes or Google Movies. After that, you have advertising video on demand. This is typically free platforms that are offering you content. They're saying, hey, come here, watch it, such as Tubi TV. But the flip side of that is you as the customer, as the end user, have to watch a few ads. And this of course is making revenue for the people supplying the content to you. We then have Fast, which is free ad supported streaming TV. So when I show you guys apps such as Freebie TV or Tubi TV, those have live TV sections that are playing content 24 seven. But again, you have to watch some ads in order to be able to watch it which then is making money for the owner. And the last one is a hybrid model. Now, this is where you have a subscription, typically lower than your normal Netflix or Prime Video price. And you're getting it cheaper, but you also have to watch ads with it. So it's a way of still getting the same content, but just having to pay for it more with your time. And a lot of companies really like this model because not only are you getting that monthly subscription, even though it's lower, but you're getting a lot more in ad revenue as well. So these four models are really important because you're gonna have to decide how you wanna monetize your content through your OTT app. And this is where we get to the sponsor of today's video. And they essentially do all the hard work for you in creating these OTT apps and monetization of your content. One thing I love about their website is they have a free OTT builder where you can actually fully customize using either their own backgrounds, their own colors, and basically have an idea of what your OTT app is going to look at. You can customize the menu buttons, you can customize the player, and they'll work with you as a content creator or as a business to have the best possible OTT app to monetize your content, and also so your subscribers or viewers or customers have the best experience with your app. And just to clarify, this is just a sample preview, so it's not necessarily what the end product will look like. They have a lot more design and technical customization options available, so when you book a free consultation, you can discuss all of that with them. Of course, making sure it's compatible across as many devices as possible, that way you can reach the largest audience. I was super impressed with their website and how they simplify the process. And one thing I know is as a YouTuber, I'm never making the most amount of money possible off YouTube. So this is something I'm gonna look into the future to see if this is a legit strategy that can make me money as well with my subscribers. It's also really important to understand that you control the content you post. I don't have to worry about YouTube's guidelines anytime I'm creating content and showing it to my subscribers. So they've really broken down the process to simplify it as easy as possible. And what I've done is link their website down below. So if you want to book a call to check out if this is a legit strategy for you, you can do that.
Thank you for checking out today's video. I know it's a bit of a different topic, but I thought it'd be interesting to kind of dive into the world of OTT apps and different device compatibilities. Again, thank you to our sponsor and I'll see you guys later. Bye guys.